welcome to St. Thomas's Church. Good morning, uh, good morning, welcome to St. Thomas's, good to see you. Uh, I've seen some of you already down at the nine o'clock service. Uh, we had oh, about ten of us there. Uh, it's a bit stranger now because we're not allowed to stand around and chat with the rule of six. You can chat to up to six people but then you have to clear off. So, uh, hey, we can meet now and in Zoom coffee later. By the wonders of the technology, it is amazing what we can still do. Uh, today is a bit of a different service. We have communion today. So, uh, Good morning, all. Oh, hang on. That is the sound of <laughs> somebody. Oh, right. I don't know whether you heard that, but I heard it. It's the sound of people on uh, Zoom uh, collecting for our communion service. Uh, so if you've not remembered to do this yet, if you'd like to just be part of the service, make sure you mute yourself <laughs> and then uh, show your video. And we, when we share bread and wine later in the service, we can see one another as a church family doing that. If you don't mute yourself, we might just hear like a voice from heaven coming over saying, morning all. I think that was Alan rather than almighty God. Uh, is this working? It is. Yes, I just need to check that. Right, let's begin with a prayer. We're going to have the communion opening prayer, which is here. And we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing it together, our first hymn, O Lord my God, how great thou art.
Thanks again to the music group for producing that. What do they make of you being a Christian? What do, how do people react to you being a Christian? What do people think of you being a Christian? Okay, perhaps you're not a Christian. Perhaps you're just joining us and watching us and trying to work out what you think and make up your mind. That is good news. You are so welcome. We're so delighted you're, you're here. And that's what happened in Jesus' day. In our reading we're going to look at today, Matthew chapter 5, it's called the Sermon on the Mount. We heard last week how uh, the Christians, the, the disciples, gathered and Jesus taught them. But the crowds of other people trying to work out what they thought around about. And there are crowds of people joining us today via Facebook and YouTube. And it's great you're doing that as you work this out, as you work out what you make of Jesus. So what Jesus is teaching today, his reading today, is aimed at Christians and it's challenging Christians about the cost of being Christians. And I guess if you're not a Christian, you're trying to work out what you believe. Hopefully you can see the benefits of Christianity are awesome. The, the grace of forgiveness, the wonder of forgiveness, of, of having a friend with God who's with you now and you'll be with him for all eternity. But it's completely free and yet Jesus says there are costs. And here's a cost. And the cost Christians we've got to work out is uh, for us, what do people think? What do people make about you being a Christian? How do they react to you being a Christian? I mean, do they know? Do people know? Does being a Christian ever affect your relationships or your conversations whatsoever? Do your colleagues know? If they were asked in a sort of review to, uh, to uh, summarise you in five words, would one of those words be Christian or something to do with your Christian faith? Would that be the way you're defined by people who know you? Do your Facebook friends know, your Instagram friends? If I was to put on the screen now uh, your social media presence, would anything show people that you're a Christian? What would be there that would demonstrate you're a Christian? There's an old question. If you were to be prosecuted for being a Christian, if being a Christian was illegal and you were taken to court for being a Christian, what evidence would they have against you? Jesus says there should be evidence. Jesus says you shouldn't be able to keep being a Christian hidden. Authentic Christianity is impossible to hide. And so today's reading says you are salt. Salt has an impact on food. Well, Christians should have an impact on the world. You are light. Light has an impact on darkness. Christians have an impact on the darkness of the world in the same way. You can't stop salt having an impact. You can't stop light having an impact. You can't stop Christians having an impact. Well, why is that? Well, if you look back to where we've come from, the beginning of this sermon was uh, last week, the beginning of Matthew chapter 5. It's the way God blesses us. If you follow Jesus, if you're part of his kingdom, here's a list of the blessings that are yours. Here's Jesus' message to those in his kingdom. Uh, the, the Jesus as the king. Those who have crowned Jesus as king of their lives, well... There are blessings for Christians in chapter 5 from uh, what well, verse 1 describes uh, the beginning uh, where the sermon uh, is held and then verse 3 starts. Here's the blessing, the way God blesses those who are his. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who just know they need God. Oh God, I need you. I've got nothing to offer. I just need you. Our poor in spirit, they're blessed by God. They're to the kingdom of heaven. They belong to heaven's kingdom. They belong to the king. They're citizens of heaven. And people are going to notice. Blessed are those who mourn. Those who, who mourn at the state of the world. Are depressed by sin in their lives. And sin in other people's lives. And when they see the news. It's oh Lord have mercy. And people are going to notice. Blessed are the meek. Those not forcing themselves on. on others, not forcing their agenda. And people are going to notice. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who want to be right with God and live holy lives. People are going to notice. Blessed are the merciful, those who are generous and forgiving and gracious, even when people don't deserve it. People are going to notice. Blessed are the pure in heart, those whose hearts, their inside, so wants to be pure that it just spills out into their lives of purity. People are going to notice. Blessed are the peacemakers, those who don't stir up trouble, but try and calm trouble, trying to sort out problems, trying to bring peace. God will notice, uh, people will notice. 
People are going to notice the way we live as Christians. They're going to take note. Which may, in Jesus' words, turn to the, the final uh, blessing. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of their righteousness. If you want to live in God's ways, people are going to notice. And people may not like it and may try and trip you up and stop you or oppose you or arrest you or beat you or kill you or whatever, persecute you to stop you following Jesus as they notice. And if that's what you go through, it doesn't feel like a blessing. You, the temptation then is to say, actually, rather than any sort of impact on the world, I'm just going to shut down, keep my faith private, keep my faith quiet. So nobody notices. So nobody knows. That's the temptation. And there's no greater temptation than now when we're in lockdown and increasingly in lockdown to just disappear into ourselves and no one notices we're a Christian. It's like an oven ready temptation to not be known and not be seen. And Jesus says, no. No. If you're going to be a Christian, people are going to notice and people should notice. People must notice. They must see the way that you live makes a difference in your life. Let's see what Jesus means as we hear the reading. Josephine's going to read from Matthew chapter 5, from verse 13 to 16. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 13. Salt and light. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, uh, Josephine, for reading. So God blesses Christians when they come into his kingdom, he blesses them. When they live as part of his kingdom, they're blessed. So when they mourn, when they feel they're poor in spirit, when they want to be holy and godly and live out their faith, people are going to notice. They're going to notice, which is why Jesus says, uh, the, they're the blessings for Christians, he says, you are salt. Verse 13, you are salt. Christians are salt. Christians don't aim to be salt. Christians don't try and aspire to be salt. He says, you are salt. And in a moment, you are light. That is what you are. That's something we're given, a, a badge we've got, a status we've got. You are salt. Now, what does that mean? I, I guess many of us will know salt means different things, uh, uses for different purposes. It was in the ancient world. Salt was used to add flavour to dishes, sprinkle some salt on, and it adds a beautiful flavour. Though, of course, nowadays we know it's a health risk. You can't sprinkle it on everything. Some people do, don't they? They shake the salt shaker all over their pizza and chips and salad and rhubarb crumble. The whole lot gets salt. Well, that's a risk. But if you didn't have any salt at all, your, your food would taste revolting. I remember once, as a kid, we got some French bread. And we, as I bit into it, it was disgusting. It just tasted like cotton wool. There was no flavour. They'd forgotten to put the salt in. Salt adds flavour. Well, Jesus says, if you live a Christian life, if you live the life as in the Beatitudes here, it adds flavour to life. It's intriguing. It's interesting. It adds flavour to, to those who know you. It's just intriguing. And, and uh, when they look at you and think, well, why is that person sad about the state of the world? And why is that person praying to God? Why does that person want to be more godly? Why is that person like that? That's interesting. It adds salt, a flavour to life, as they can see a life that is different, distinct, a life that knows God. And it makes people think and wonder and ponder and maybe even ask questions because you are salt. Salt adds flavour, but salt had a second use. Uh, vegetarians, close your eyes. Here's some salt beef, uh, beef that uh, in the days when there was no fridges, uh, if you had some meat, it would go off really quickly in the heat. So they rub salt in it. It preserves it. It stops going off. Vegetarians, you're safe. It's gone. Now, in a world where people are not connected to God, when they're not under his command, when they're not part of his kingdom, 
then their lives start to smell. As they say no to God, they turn away from him, they, they choose their own path, they, their morals slip, or their morals are never there, they, or, or whatever. Over time, their lives start to stench. They go off. They smell. But if you're a Christian, and you're living according to the Beatitudes, then your life is not going off. Your Christian faith is preserving your life. And actually, rather than go off, your life is getting better and better, and will be perfect one day, not a hint of going off one day when Jesus comes back. So being salt to people can sort of preserve their morals, their, their, or at least confront them with a godly Christianity. And it can perhaps put the break on them so they don't fall further and further from God. It could perhaps be like a moral disinfectant, keeping people somewhat in line so the world doesn't spin off and off for a, a million miles from God. It could be a reminder of God that, again, can provoke people to stop and think and wonder and question because you are salt. So Christians, because of the way you live, because of your love for Jesus, because you want to be holy, because you want to be forgiving and gracious, because of the spirit living in you, because you are being transformed and, and becoming less and less stenchy, because of all of that, because you're salt of the world, things can change. So, you are salt, don't lose your saltiness, don't lose your saltiness. Verse 13, again, you are salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salt again? Where have you lost your saltiness? Where have you lost your distinctiveness? Where have you compromised your holiness? Where have you chased other blessings? another lifestyle and left God's blessing and God's lifestyle behind because as a Christian people do watch you they see you they see how you live they see how you react how you feel how you speak how you think and if you've lost, lost your holiness your distinctiveness your saltiness what use are you in making Jesus known in showing a kingdom in, in preserving people from falling from God, in reminding people there is a God, a God who's there, a God who matters, a God who loves, a God who cares, and a God we will answer to one day. What is a Christ use what use is a Christian like that? What use is salt if it loses its saltiness? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Where have you lost your saltiness? Think and pray as we just pause halfway through this. Just to think and pray and sing.
Okay, my computer now tells me that Facebook is disconnected. So I'm just going to carry on in the hope that that's not the case. But if it is, Jane will come through and tell me how much I'll start again. So, you are salt. So don't lose your saltiness. In the same way, you are light. You are light. Spot the mistake. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Right? Wrong. He didn't say, I am the light of the world. Well, he did in John's Gospel at another time. But right here, he doesn't say, he is the light of the world. He says, you are the light of the world. Now, that's such a surprising sentence. You are the light of the world. In what sense are we the light of the world? Well, think about a really, really dark night. A really pitch black night, you go out and there's no street lights on, you're in the countryside and it's completely dark. And then suddenly the moon breaks through the clouds and suddenly, whereas you couldn't see your feet before, suddenly you can see your feet, you can see the houses, you can see the stuff around about you. Now of course the moon is not a light, it's just a lump of dead rock, but it reflects the sun. You see the light of the world, uh, the light of the sun reflecting through the moon. Well, in the same way, we are like the moon, we reflect Jesus' light. So in a dark world, we are lights, but we're reflecting the ultimate light, Jesus, the light of the world. So, like salt affects people around you, your light, which uh, shows light in the darkness of the world. A world without God, a world uh, in darkness, sees God through you. Your life spreads the light of Jesus into the world. People see the king, people hear about the king through you. They can join the kingdom as they see the light of his kingdom through you. You are the light of the world. You are the light. So don't hide your light. Verse 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Well, that's obvious, isn't it? Here is a town built on a hill. Can you imagine if you're walking through the valley floor, you'll look up and you'll see that town and it cannot be hidden. In the daytime, it may reflect the bright light of the sun and dazzle. There's no way you can hide it. In the nighttime, even less so. As people light their fires and as they cook their food and they put the lights on, well, you just cannot hide that town, can you? And if they light their light, here is a lamp being lit, a, an oil lamp being lit, well, that casts the light out into the darkness. If the darkness outside, you would see that. Though actually, it's not a ton of light, is it? If that's the only light you've got in your house, you've got to make the most of it. You're not going to put that under a bowl and turn it out like that, are you? You're not going to do that. Who would do that? Who would put their light under a bowl? Instead, says Jesus, they put it on a stand so that uh, it gives light to everyone in the house. Now there's two illustrations there. If you've got light uh, and if you're a city on a hill you can't hide it. You've got light in your house uh, like a, a, an oil lamp you, you don't hide it. And so if you've got the light of Jesus if you're reflecting the light of Jesus you are the light to the world don't hide it. Don't hide it. If you're a Christian, actually you can't hide being a Christian. If you're a Christian, you should never try to hide being a Christian. Because by trying to hide, you actually have just as much impact on people. Because by trying to hide, if they know you're a Christian, they'll just see that it actually doesn't matter. It doesn't really make a difference to you. Actually, you don't really care about it. You're not passionate about it. And that says just as much as if you speak up, but a very different message. So don't hide yourself. Jesus says so. Verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Reflect Jesus in the way that you live. Be salt, be light. So you live life, life of, of good deeds, says Jesus. Doing good things, blessing those people by, by being meek. If you're, if you're meek, you're not pushing your, your way and not your agenda. Blessed are the merciful. If you're, if you're being kind and generous and, and gracious and forgiving, even when you shouldn't necessarily be like that in the world's eyes, blessed are the pure in heart, those who are pure and want to be 
godly in their attitudes, blessed are the peacemakers who, who are not stirring up trouble but calming situations. If you live like that, you are shining light into the world. Unless you're getting the attention for doing that. You see, lots of people do lovely stuff. On Facebook, on Our Kids Grove, the Facebook page for Kids Grove, you see some lovely people doing some lovely things. Some people in the community have fed thousands of meals, uh, cooked thousands of meals for people during the coronavirus lockdown. And people sometimes respond, I've mocked this up, as you'll see on Facebook. Uh, so there's somebody who's being lovely and someone's responding, what a lovely person you are. Someone else is saying, ah, you're wonderful. Uh, someone's, you've restored my faith in humani uh, humanity. Obviously, that had to be mocked up on Facebook. Um, if we allow people to tell us we're great and lovely, how will they see our Father in heaven? How will they give glory to our Father in heaven? Jesus says, people will see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. But what if you take the glory? He doesn't get a look in then, does he? Think of the Pharisees. If you turn over one page to, and my Bible is one page, to chapter 6, verse 1. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do, you'll have your no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, don't announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. They got their praise. When they were the light, when they got the glory, that's, that's it, that's their reward. We're not meant to get the glory. We're the light of the world reflecting somebody else's glory, reflecting Jesus' glory. So it's his light that is to shine, not ours. So that what takes place in the light, people see actually, oh, look, that is God at work. That's Jesus at work. This is the Father working. So in other words, if people know a Christian to make some sort of comment on Facebook or in reality about, oh, you're a lovely person. Well, yeah, God's really helped me and changed me. Or if you, they comment on forgiveness, just say, yeah, well, Jesus forgave me. And, and so I need to be forgiving, too. And that's what I'm working on. Make yourself a work in progress and point to Jesus. Point up. And people praise you. God helps me. God's purifying. God's changed me. God's made me different. Give the glory to God so they can give the glory to God. So they can see, okay, I can see God at work in their lives. And perhaps they'll want to join in. Perhaps they'll want to join God's kingdom. Or perhaps they'll mock and sideline and, and insult and hurt. In which case, blessed are those who are persecuted. Because then you'll know choosing Jesus was worth it. Even the cost have others been horrible, you still discover, actually, Jesus, you're worth it. So, what do people make of you being a Christian? How do people react in your life to being a Christian? What do people think of when they th think of you for being a Christian? You are salt. Have you lost your saltiness? You are light. Have you tried to dim the light? What do you need to say to Jesus? Let's just speak to him for a moment and quiet ourselves. And then let's ask him to help us by his spirit to be light to this world because the darkness is great.
Let us confess our sins, for when the times when we have not been sold as we should, we are light, but we've tried to dull the lightness. So let's turn to our prayer of confession. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Well, Jesus is light to the world because he comes to us in our darkness and he dies on the cross to forgive us everything we have ever done so we can be completely washed clean and join him as part of his kingdom forever. Praise God for his grace and mercy. And Janice is going to lead us in prayer now. Father, we thank you that you have called us to be salt and light in your world. Thank you, Jesus, that you made your teachings clear whilst you were on earth. We ask your forgiveness for the times when we have lived selfishly instead of caring for those around us. Please refresh us by your Holy Spirit's power. Help us live according to your commandments and show others the way you want the world to live. Give us your grace in abundance so that we can do the good deeds that you have called us to. Help us to live in obedience to you and show kindness to others as your body here on earth. Lord, we thank you for growth groups and all that we learn when we meet together to study your word. Thank you for strengthening friendships as we share our lives together. Please help us to keep in touch with those who are unable to join us during the coronavirus crisis. Please encourage others to join us. Father, we thank you for Letty, our school chaplain. Thank you for her enthusiasm and dedication. Thank you that there has been a positive start to the new school year at the King's School, greater engagement with chapter worship, and more opportunities for Letty to minister to, to the students pastorally. Bless Letty as she ministers to St Thomas and St Saviour's primary schools too. Help her to find the right balance between time spent in pastoral work and worship preparation. Thank you for the encouragement of several new Christian staff recently joining the King School. May the love of Jesus shine through all the Christian staff and students as they deal with demands of the new staggered timetable. We thank you also that Letty's husband Mark is now helping at the King's School. We pray that you will help him and all the new staff to absorb the information they need to know and build relationships with students and other staff. Bless Mark and Letty too as they lead the Cypher Group at St Thomas Church. We ask that this group will grow and that the young people in the schools and in Cypher will open their hearts and minds to the Gospel. Lord, we bring Simeon, Gemma, Elodie, Jesse and Jonas to you as they reach out to their neighbours in Bamako. We thank you that Marley is calm after the turmoil of the coup in August. We ask that an election for an interim leader will be held soon. We thank you that coronavirus has not spread too widely and that a testing regime is now being put in place. We thank you that recent rainfall in Keys will help the people to grow the crops they need. Please bless them with a good harvest. Thank you that the family have been able to have time off with their friends in Bamako. Bless the children as they start homeschooling with two other families. May they be happy as they learn together. Please guide Simeon as he produces 2021 calendars featuring the story of the prodigal son. We pray that they will help people learn about you. Please watch over Simeon's colleagues, Ernst and Marianne and Ruby, as they plan to return this month. Thank you that Gabby was able to return to Germany recently. Please refresh her. Please give the team wisdom about whether to hold the music workshop for Saninki believers in October and protect the leaders who need to cross borders which are presently closed due to the tensions 
between the ruling military junta and the surrounding countries. Please give the country's leaders wisdom and bring safety and security to the whole country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers together, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Janice, for recording and, and leading us in prayer. And in a moment, we're going to sing a song, and after that is communion. Uh, we have here, there we go, the bread and wine here. And if you want to take part in this, uh, please get some bread and some squash, if you've not already done so, uh, some bread and wine or whatever, in a way of remembering uh, Jesus dying for us and showing we trust him. Uh, I've said this before, but if you're visiting us and don't you normally take the bread and the wine, then uh, best not to, please. Um, just watch what we're doing and, and just uh, take a note of it and just and, and just think about what it means that we're saying Jesus died and the bread reminds us of his death as his body, uh, the, the bread broken reminds us of his body given and the, the wine reminds us of his blood shed. Just uh, perhaps give me a ring or send me an email if you'd like to chat about what we're believing but best not take the communion uh, until we've, we've talked about that or uh, we've had a little service to, to confirm that that's your, your faith. If you're uh, sharing with others in the house, then as you uh, pass the, the bread and the wine to them, you could say uh, something like, eat this, remembering Jesus died for you, uh, or drink this. Uh, we've got some people have, have joined us uh, on video, on, on Zoom. Uh, if you've done that, if you make sure your, your camera's pointing at you and it's unmuted so we can see you, but please keep the microphone muted because we want to just uh, be quiet rather than share with people chatting. Let's sing again about the cross of Christ.
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It's our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name ever praising you and saying holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest and we pray together we do not presume to come to this your table merciful lord trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son Jesus Christ and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made that a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, he instituted and in his Holy Gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So now take and eat this bread in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful.
a prayer for those who haven't taken the bread and wine, we pray. We pray as you, you share our time together that the Lord would bless you. As you remember Jesus dying on the cross for you, may you grow in faith in him and trust him as Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise, that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. Oh. <clears throat> May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth to live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, may God bless you through uh, sharing that together and thanks for those who shared with us with their videos. A couple of notices. Uh, every year we have to have, uh, by law, annual church meetings. I say it by law as though it's not a pleasure, it's a joy. But we have to have them and uh, they normally have to be done by April. Because of the lockdown we couldn't do ours. Well we've now had permission uh, with Christians uh, up and down the country to hold them uh, via Zoom and in person together. So I've sent out an email uh, which explains the process and explains the agenda and when the meeting is, which is uh, two weeks on Monday, Monday the 5th of October, uh, asking you who you could nominate uh, for various roles in church life. Um, there's all sorts of forms on there to fill in. Uh, just follow through the logic. Uh, if you didn't get the email, <laughs> that's because a few days ago there were 93 people on our email list. And when I sent out the email this morning, there was 91. So I've deleted two of you. <laughs> I've, I've written you off. I've cut you off. Not deliberately. So if that's you, if you haven't had the email, please will you let me know so I can work out who is missing. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and likewise, uh, if you didn't get the Zoom coffee email, the same thing's happened. Again, shout, shout up. Uh, but if you did get the email, there you go. You need to come along. It was a great last week. Lots of people who had not been before came along. It was a wonderful time. So please come along again and try it for the first time if you've not been. So we can encourage one another as we're meant to do, as God commands us to do. Well, a final song. Let's celebrate uh, what the cross of Christ has achieved to us and the hope we have. We who are light to the world, let's look at the light, where we're going. Ah, this is great. Let's praise him.
a fair to finish. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>